I don't think y'all have any trouble seeing me. There's enough of me. My name is Chris Burden. I'm Operations Supervisor at the Morgantown office of Warner Hill Electric. I've been there going on 24, 20, this January will be 25 years, so I've been around a while. This is my service area, uh, Ohio County, Butler County. And I'm joined tonight by our lead line technician who also works out of the Morgantown office. This is Chad Cox. And also tonight we have with us our supervisor, Mr. Greg Weathers. Greg is the district manager there in the Morgantown office. We're going to approach this just a little different because normally we do this for fourth graders, okay? And that's the, the guys we usually target and the things that we normally try to go about. But I'm going to give it just a little different approach tonight so maybe it can help you guys understand what we do in a outage situation. Uh, in the world we live in today, how many people's got one of these? Anybody see this? I'll flip it on right here. Anybody got one of those? Yeah. We all have those, and it's a now, it's a now, we want it now society that we live in. So we don't like for our power to be off any longer than it has to be. But as we start tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about electricity, uh, what it is, why we work like we work in, a, in an extreme outage situation, and then we're going to make a little noise. Uh, we're going to get your attention. Everything that we mimic on this trailer right here tonight is exactly the same things that can happen on that 7200 volt power line behind you. I'm going to start by telling you how we get 7200 volts on this line behind us at this level and, and explain to you why a storm situation is so dangerous to us. Okay. Over here on this pole, we've got 120 volts coming in. When you look at this trailer, we have a transformer. <coughs> That's exactly what it does. It transforms. It doesn't care if we're putting 120 in on the secondary side. It goes through the windings backwards in the transformer. Comes back out on our line at right around 7,200 volts. Now, why is that important for you guys to know? Anybody ever heard of a generator? If you have a generator hooked up in your home and you don't have a proper transfer switch or you do not have a proper disconnect, back to that, that can be very detrimental to alignment. I just told you a transformer don't care which way it transforms. Same thing can happen if you hook a generator up on your home, it comes back through the circuit, back to the transformers, and it puts 7,000 volts back out onto the line to us. We do take precautions in storms. We test the line and we ground the line. Those are two precautions, but that's basically how we're gonna get 7,200 volts on this line tonight. <laughs> We work a lot in the dark, but this is a first. We've never done this show like this. So hold on to your hat is what I'm going to tell you. But uh, to, go, to go ahead and tell you how we work just a little bit in a storm situation before I start with our presentation. Basically, if we get a storm and it hits and it's a large storm such as our ice storm, we have a team that goes out and does an assessment. Now, the ice storm was totally different than anything else we've ever had because we done the assessment after the first part of the storm hit and then we went home to get a little rest but when we come back the next morning everything that was standing wasn't standing no more so it kind of caught us overnight too so the assessment wasn't really a true idea of what we had but, but basically we do an assessment to see what we have down we have basically three types of lines in our service area. We have a feeder from TVA, which is 161,000 volt delivery point. We have that at Aberdeen in our service area. Then we have a 69 feed, 69,000 volt feed from Aberdeen that feeds Prentice, Purdue, and South Morgantown and Morgantown. And then KU has a feed that feeds Rosine Sub, and we're off the Rosine Sub tonight, by the way. And then we have our 13 circuits, which is right behind you, the three phase. Then we have a single phase 13 circuit, and then we have individuals. So in the scheme of things, the first thing that we want to fix is what's going to do the most good for people. That's the reason why when we get the first calls that our major line is down, that's what we're going to concentrate on first. It doesn't do us no good to come out and fix all the single phase lines if the transmission line and the three phase line coming to it isn't energized. So we're going to go ahead, and Chad's going to go ahead and close this jack in on this line. Electricity is something that's kind of unique and different. It does, our senses don't really work on it. We've got a piece of cable laying here. 
You walk over this cable and it's it's here, it's well, that cable that we just supposedly energized. You can't smell it. It's right here above me at 7,200 volts. You don't hear it. You might hear just a little ionization of the air between the two connections whenever that we make that connection to make the line energized. The thing that we really look at every day and every day that we work is, and in our business, and, and anybody that works with this will attest to this, that in the business of electricity and when you're dealing with it, at any time, anything can happen. Did I get your attention yet? Okay. Let me explain to you what just happened. That antenna that we had just fell on the line. It caused a fault on the line that was a, more than what the fuse on the line was capable of withstanding. So it opens up and clears the fault. Here's where we, uh, sometimes people get a little upset with us. And I'm just going to put it out there, be honest. We just blow the fuse and the lights are off in the house and it's the fourth quarter of the, or the second half of the UK basketball game. Guess what? That happened in Butler County. <laughs> Believe me, you get the phone calls. But here's the thing that I want to instill in you guys because safety is number one priority in what we do. Day in, day out. Excuse me. And it's my job as a supervisor to see that whatever I bring to the work today, whatever Chad comes with today, that we go home with that night. That's my first and foremost. But when that fuse just blows, the fire went off. The way it works for us is we have a systems control center. You call in, you get the 800 number, and you call in, it's after hours. That phone call comes into systems control. If we've got a whole line out, it actually has a device that will predict which protective device is open. Kind of tells us where we need to go to. If we get one call, we know we got an individual. But if more than one person calls, it links them all together and it tells us that we have more than one person out. When we get that call and it tells us there's more than one person out, we go to the protective device, such as this one, we look at it and we see that it's open. We call back to them and we tell them, hey, fuse number 314 is open. I'm going to be patrolling this line out. This is where we get in trouble sometimes because the truck drives up the road and then the truck drives back down the road. <laughs> and we drive up the road. And we go back down the road. And you're standing over there going, hey, buddy, my lights are off right here, stupid. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm serious. That happens, OK? Here's the thing. If I go out there and we don't ride that line out, first of all, that's the rule. We're going to look at all of it that we can look at. But if I don't ride that line out, and one of you guys has stuck an antenna up and it's got away from you and he's fell in the line and you still got to hold the end of that antenna and I don't do my job properly and I come and close that fuse in, I just kill you. That's the reason why that we go and look at everything that we can before we try a line. A lot of times it means getting off road and walking. We will look at everything that we possibly can to find the fault before we try that line. It's, a, it's simply a safety, safety function that ensures us. So we go, and we may drive up and down the road five or six times. It may be because I've dropped one off over here, and I've got to come back around and pick him up, and he's walking through there. So I hope that helps just a little bit in why you may see that truck go by four or five times, and you think, well, they're not getting my lights back on. But there's a reasoning behind that. And the reason is that we're trying to figure out what's going on. So we found the fault. It was the antenna. Hopefully the guys would instruct you what just happened and, and what not to do. We get it cleared up. We'll go ahead and close the line back in. So we got that fuse closed back in. We'll go ahead and turn the lights on on the trailer so you can see a little bit. So the lights come back on in the house. Sometimes when you're sitting there in the house, though, I think there's a twig in there. Sometimes when you're sitting there, anybody ever have their lights to flicker? <coughs> I can't see y'all. You have to wait. <laughs> I'm very interactive, okay? Your lights flicker? Yeah. yeah. When we figure out, we pay a power bill to TVA just as you pay a power bill to us. So one of the big things that we do in the midst of paying power bills and the things that we like to do on a cycle is we trim the trees. <laughs> 
kids that there's something they need to do before they ever climb a tree. There's something you need to do before you ever plant a tree. We're going to ask you to look up to see your surroundings. If you listen, you'll hear that tree limb popping. Right here is exactly the reason why we want to trim the trees. But that tree limb will sit there and burn. Well, we're not getting anything for that. We call that line loss in the, in the electric world. We're not getting anything for that. And out of what we take in the door, it's amazing how much we pay for our power bill. I think we get 21 cents out of every dollar that comes through the door to operate on. Everything else goes to pay our power bill. So that's the reason why that we like to trim the trees. We like to do a maintenance program. Uh, if you've got kids, I promise you they like to climb trees. I got two, a 14-year-old and 11-year-old. And every chance they get, they're going to run up a tree. And if they're like I was when I was little, they're an adrenaline junkie. They're not going to just climb a little ways and then quit. They're going to go as high as they can go. But if you'll see what's going on with our tree room here, and it's going to meet in the middle here in just a second, and we're going to get a pretty big blue ball of fire. But this is what happens when we don't trim our tree limbs. And, and it can be a... But you get the point of why we have a right-of-way program and why we trim the trees. It's not only that we want to come out and say, well, there's your tree, we're going to make it look ugly. No, that's not it at all. We want to come out to help protect you as well as protect what it is that we do. So we have the tree in. We're going to show you something now that's uh, it's pretty neat, but as a... And Greg, I know, would attest to this, because Greg was my boss on the crew for 10 years before we went inside. But if you're a crew leader, this sound that you're fixing to hear, we have a, we have a little fella that's made out of copper, and because it's dark, it's hard to see. But we got this little dude that's made out of copper. And he has a hot dog on his finger. Okay. And sometimes Chad usually says the hot dog resembles what I'm mostly made up of. And that's <laughs> what he says. That's how it goes. But the hot dog does represent what a human is made up of. There's a lot of moisture in there. But we only have one on the finger, and we, we have one from today, and you can't see it, but we're going to stick this in here. But this is a sound that you don't forget, but you'll know what it is when you hear it, and it's the sound of a contact with something to a fire line. So I'm going to ask Chad to go ahead and, and see my buddy Copper Kid up there. He's one of the kids, or an adult, that has climbed a tree or has a fire line down, and they haven't paid any attention to what's going on. So when you get into that, you're, this sound right here is what you hear, and you never want to hear this sound. And, and what you're seeing is actually a 7,200 7, volt arc in a flash. But it, it cooks the hot dogs, and the high voltage cooks from the inside out. And, and I always tell the kids that if we had a hot dog on his foot, because it went in his hand, and it would travel through his body, and out his foot. And I always try to instill in the children, if we had a hot dog on his foot, it's so violent that, that we would be wearing it because it would be all over us, where it comes out at. There's always an exit wound and a wound where it comes out. And that's on the high voltage. It's very, very dangerous. That's a sound that you never want to hear as an employee because you know if that's happened, someone's made a contact that they didn't need to make. We do everything that we can every day to work as safe as we can. It's, it's a great industry. But sometimes it takes us a little longer to, to do the things that we want to accomplish because we have safety rules in place. Our clothing that we wear. These shirts that Chad and I have on in the pants will actually not let us get more than a third degree burn. They won't stick to you. They'll clear themselves. I always tease everybody, Brother Hillard's here somewhere I know, I always tell them my most expensive clothes aren't the ones I wear to church or the ones I wear to work. But that's for a reason. They're very, very safe for us. As the kids always ask, well, 
Why can you burn set on the power line? What's that? He's not grounded. That's exactly right. He's at the same, what we like to say, the same potential. There's these dudes that actually work for TVA that come around, and they will actually come around and uh, on the helicopter, on the 161,000, and they got these leg irons that goes up to their knees, and they will hook themselves to that and work on it. Become the same potential. Our buddy's in up there on that transformer. We call him Ozzy. Some of them call him a Butler County turkey. Uh, Ozzy can sit on the tank of that transformer. Guys, this time of year right now, squirrels, varmints, critters are moving. Man, we have a ton of outages because of them. Because what they do is, it's just like Ozzy, my buddy up there, he can sit on that transformer tank as long as he wants to all day long. That bird can fly in here and light on that line all day long as long as he wants to because he's at the same potential. But what you got to worry about is when old Ozzy turns around there and he reaches over and he pecks. <laughs> and when Ozzy pecks, well, I'm not going to say what he just blowed off. <laughs> no more Ozzy. All right, now. Hey, I got a question for you right now. And, and I want you to answer me, guys. I don't care if you're 1 or 99. This is a very important question. The lights just went off on our trailer, right? Is there power on that top line? No. What's that? No. Answer me. No. Come on, guys. I'm not going to go no further until I get an answer. Yes or no? No. Yes? No? Who don't no. know? Yes. I don't know. The only way that I can find out is with the device that we have in our truck that we can test the line with. I want you to remember this. If you don't take but two things from me tonight, look up at your surroundings. Always look up at what you're going to do. Make yourself familiar. If you're on a tractor in that field down there, make yourself familiar with that surrounding. You may have run through that field 90 times. Something could have changed that one time. Make yourself familiar with what's going on when you're running that combine. If a guy wire's broke somewhere and that wire has sagged down and we haven't got a call on that, you may have went underneath that guy wire 70 times. For the last 10 years, you've went underneath that guy wire. But this time, guess what? It's sagged down and you just got it. Always look around to make yourself familiar. So that you know, I'm going to ask Chad to pull a heart into this, into this uh, top phase here. Just because the lights are off in the home does not mean that the line is de-energized or dead. Okay? It's kind of neat that we get to do this, and I told the kids this today, if we was to do this during the day and pull arcs and do stuff like this, We'd be in there on his desk at the carpet getting talked to because you don't do things like this. We'll go ahead and close the fuse back in on our, on our lights and get the lights back on at the house. Boy, as a lineman, and when I started doing these about five years ago, it's hard to push that in there to... <laughs> it's hard to push that fuse in there or to push that auger in there to make that fire come out because our instinct is is when it starts to fire is to take it away and open it up but here it's a little different for a training situation we get to close it in so Chad has come out and we found Ozzy laying at the butt of the pole we've cleaned him up and the transformer's not hurt but we do this on every one of these that we go to we have a piece of wire that's coated it's called bird wire we also have a guard that goes around the top of that transformer. And we have a little rubber nut that goes on a boat that they love to set on and pack. Every one of them that we go to, when we have a trouble call like this, those three things take place. If it doesn't burn the transformer up, we'll change the arrestor out, we'll put a squirrel guard on it, we'll put a bird guard on it, and we'll put the bird wire in and cover up the, the light and arrestor nut. Why? Just so what I said while ago, nobody likes to be out. So we get the lights back on at the house. Sometimes there's misconceptions about things in life. And, and I tell the kids, we like to fly a kite. And, and when we tell the kids, you know, you stand around here, and I told them today, I said they wouldn't want to fly a kite here. Darren's got too much junk in there. <laughs> you look, there's something stuck up, so this wouldn't be a good place. But if you go down there in his bottoms, it's pretty wide open. 
That's the reason why I said you familiarize yourself with what's going on, okay? That way you know what's going on around you. But if you're flying that kite, and a dirty kite string can become very conductive. But if you're flying that kite down there, when I was doing it as a kid, I never was happy to go about 40 feet. I'd run it out until I couldn't have no more string. And I asked the kids today, and, and they were dead on on this. What goes up must do what? Yeah. It's going to come down sooner or later. This is the thing, though. It's like a fishing line, kite string, a piece of rope, dirty rope. You go to sling it, and you don't look around and familiarize yourself with what you got going on, and you throw it over top of that, I'm going to let Chad swing her kite string in there. He ain't never done this one. Well, he done pretty good. <laughs> Make another fire. Do it one more time. Watch the lights on our trailer. See what happens to our lights? Everything that goes on out there at one point in time can dim your lights in your house. Okay? That tree lives in there. If somebody breaks a pole off on another road, that can cause problems with your lights at your house. The last thing that I'm going to talk about, and then we'll be done, get you out of here. I want to thank Darren, though, for, for allowing us to do this tonight. We, we love to talk to people, and my thing is if we can change one person's perspective on safety, power line safety, if you're in the field down here, Pearl, that's my buddy Pearl. But if you're in the field down here and you break a pole off, I hope what we're fixing to share with you is, is information that you that you can take home and use. <coughs> but if we can keep one person from getting hurt, it's worth all the time and the money and our efforts to come out and do this. <coughs> this is Pearl, and I always said, and she's in peril. Her hair was straight when we started just five years ago. That's uh, I'm serious. But Pearl is kind of like, uh, the only person that knows my wife here is Greg, so I can say this. Pearl's kind of like my wife. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. She's late for everything. Greg, we drive to church separate because I'm going to get to her on time. But, and I'm going to go ahead and... Somebody will tell her, I know, you'll see me at Walmart, you'll say, you know what your husband said about you? But I always say, she's the woman that's going down the road that's got her cell phone stuck to this ear, and she's trying to read something that's going on over here, and she might be driving with her knee, and I found her makeup bag in her vehicle. So that tells me she puts it on going down the road, okay? That's kind of what Pearl has done. But Pearl has had a wreck, and she broke off one of our poles. <laughs> And our pole falls across Pearl's car. Plain and simple. Now remember I told you this is kind of interaction, all right? Should Pearl get out of the car or stay in the car? You're in the tractor and you break a pole off and that wire's hanging up there where you need to stay, guys. Stay in the tractor. You're running a track hole. You're running a dozer. And you break that off. Stay where you're at. I told you a while ago, everybody's got one of these. Use it. Pick it up and dial one RECC. You may have to sit there a little while, but at least if you sit there a little while and we get here and we make the determination and that line is de-energized and we get you out, you're going to walk home that evening. You're going to go home. It'd be worth sitting there a little while. True story. Boys got a phone call one night, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Got guy had a wreck. He broke the pole off. Just so happened that when the pole fell, the pole didn't come all the way down to the ground. It stood up just a little bit. The guy come along behind him on the motorcycle. He slid the motorcycle underneath the wires. More than likely, more than likely, the motorcycle wreck didn't kill him. Instead of staying put, he tried to get up and walk out. Story. We had SNR construction in Bollinger and we've done this demonstration for their people. The guy running a track hole broke off the primary pole. Boom. It's laying on the ground and the wire is about this high off the ground. The guy stays in the track hole. They call us. Guess what? When we get there, the line is still in a guy. He stayed in the track hole. 
Remember, it don't work with our senses. You can't smell it. You sure don't want to feel it. You can't hear it. Because up there, we don't hear anything until something goes awry. But when it goes wrong is when you know it. If you don't take anything else home from us tonight, if you break something off at all costs, as long as you possibly can, stay in your piece of equipment or in your vehicle. And as I tell the kids, if it's laying on the ground, stay away from it. There's no reason to go up and investigate. Okay? Now you say, well, it's starting to burn and it's starting to smoke and the tractor tires are starting to melt down and it's getting hot in here. I need to climb out. I need to go. There is a way you can do that, okay? And I'm going to tell you about it tonight. I'm not the best at this. Because uh, I've been too many of them steak sandwiches. <laughs> being honest. But when you get on that, and I told the kids, you can do it on a school bus, you can do it in a car, you can do it on a tractor, a piece of equipment. If you feel like it's come to the point that you can't stay in there no longer, you go to the opposite side of the car or the tractor, wherever, where the line is down on it, okay? Without making contact to that, you put both of your feet together. You get them together. You put your hands across your chest, all right? When you do this, then you hop and you land on both feet. If you fall, whatever you do, don't stick your hand out. You fall in one piece. You shouldn't fall hopping. And you keep hopping, and you keep hopping. The reason I say is you keep hopping, I'm gonna tell you why anybody ever picked up a rock and throw it out in the middle of a pond? I got it right tonight. <laughs> anybody ever done that? When you throw that rock in that pond, wherever it hits, then where it comes out, there's ripples in there, okay? What happens if that electricity is dissipating in the ground, you're going to have different amounts of voltage being put out from that. So if you're right here, you might be at, say, 100 volts, but right over here might be 1,000 volts. Right over here might be 5,000. But if you land on both of them, like I said a while ago, when you're together, you can be at the same potential. You're not at a different point. So as long as you're hopping and you don't step, <laughs> then you're okay. Now you ask me, you say, how far do I hop? Any EMTs and firemen here? Good. Here's what I say. If somebody's running up to you and they're an EMT and fireman and they fall over dead, you keep hopping. <laughs> Serious. You keep hopping. Because if he's running up to you and he makes that step, then there you are, okay? You keep hopping. I hope that what we've done tonight in our, in our own little way, this is the first for us. Uh, Chad has been my partner with these for a while. He's on a special project or he'd be with me tomorrow. we got another gentleman out of Bowling Green that helps with the kids too. <coughs> uh, I enjoy working with Chad and it's always good for us to get to do these. And I trust that you take something home. If it's no more than when you start to run your combine this fall, that you familiarize yourself with that field and you look around and you see if something's hanging lower than it was last year or if it's changed since you've planted. You know, it ain't like these combines are getting smaller. <laughs> you know, they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, on behalf of One Rule Electric, and Greg, if you have anything you'd like to say, on behalf of One Rule Electric, uh, we're proud to serve you. I want you to know that. Uh, we take what we do, it's not a job. I can tell you this from the bottom of my heart, with all the guys that I work with, it's not a job. It's a way of life. And we love it. So we're proud to serve you guys. And anytime we can be of a help, you give our office a call. And we'll be more than happy to help you out. Y'all have a safe trip home. God bless. That concludes it for the night. I hope it was worthwhile for everybody coming out. And uh, thank you. Enjoy. <laughs>